Hello. OK, so here we go, oxidation. Um, let's see. So let's try to understand these three um, reagents for the oxidation part, right? The first one that's going to react is going to be these two, peroxide and sodium hydroxide. Um, sodium hydroxide, it's good for you guys to know that it's actually just Na plus OH minus, OK? Because uh, they have an ionic bond in between them and kind of like NaCl table salt. Once it goes into water, the ionic, the ionic bond splits apart. They separate, and they become two separate molecules. Um, OH minus is a pretty good base. Hopefully, you guys have heard of that in lecture. Peroxide is just H2O2. I don't know if you can see a face here, but yeah, anyway. The base, uh, OH, is going to react with one of the hydrogens of peroxide and actually just grab it. And then when the hydrogen is snatched off by the OH hydroxide base, the two electrons in the bond are now freed up. So what they do is they just go to the peroxide. And then you form a peroxide ion, which looks like that. Okay. All right, so now what this peroxide ion does it's, it's, is that it's actually going to come on over here and attack the boron. Okay. In case you're wondering why the boron's being attacked, once again, boron is a wimp. He cannot hold on to his electrons. Even though he's bound to carbon over here, carbon's even more electro electronegative than boron. And carbon's already really, really generous. So yeah, anyway, there's a partial positive on the boron and almost partial negatives on the three carbons. So it just pshoo, nucleophilically attacks it. And then we form a intermediate. At this point here, I'm going to abbreviate these two, I guess, these two former alkenes as just R just to save space and so it's not so cluttered. And I'll leave our original alkene like this so you can keep track of it, OK? Um, why don't you take a second and um, try and draw the next product, I mean the next step in the meantime. It'll be good practice because on the test, if you have to actually do the mechanism out, you're going to have to do this out yourself, OK? Quick hip pause. All right, so this is what I got. Did you guys get the same thing? Am I missing something over here? Hopefully you guys claw me, but the oxygen, first of all, it is supposed to be neutral. It's not supposed to be negative anymore because it took two of its um, electrons and shared it with the boron to form a bond, friendly bond. So it's now neutral because it lost electrons. Boron actually gained electrons from oxygen, right? And it's now going to be negatively, negatively charged, OK? So at this point here, the most, I think this is the most weirdest step. So if you can um, remember this step, it'll help you a lot. And hopefully how weird it is might help you remember it, actually. OK, so what actually happens is that the boron carbon bond right here, this is the original one that we formed in the beginning, this bond right here, it actually breaks. The two electrons in that bond actually ditches boron and goes to the electronegative oxygen instead. And when it does that, your, your molecule that used to be an alkene is now disconnected from the boron. It's freed up, so it's getting closer and closer to our final product. And when it attacks the oxygen, right? Oxy oxygen only likes uh, two bonds, and he already has two bonds. So what happens is it gives up this weak bond over here that it has with this OH, and then that part flies out. And I'll redraw it over here, OK? You guys redraw it with me in the meantime. Pause the video if you need to, by the way. All right, so now we're over here. And I probably should have told you guys to brace yourselves in the beginning, because this is a pretty long mechanism. I didn't write in all the charges yet. See if you guys can find out what's wrong with um, my product products at this step, OK? So take a second. Um, pause me if you need to. What I'm missing is actually a negative charge on this OH, right? Because the O was neutral before. It got two electrons from the bond, so now it's negative. The oxygen before um, has two bonds. It lost the bond, but at the same time, it gained the bond. So that's why it stays, neutr uh, it stays neutral. The boron actually had four bonds before, but it lost the electrons in this bond right here. So that's why it's now neutral. So we're over here. We're almost done, OK? Um, at this point here, what happens is the hydroxide that got kicked off before, right? It's actually going to help us out in the very, very last step. 
it's going to attack boron, right, and free up this oxygen so that it gets closer to this oxygen in the final product. The OH is going to attack boron. Boron only likes three bonds, like I said before, right? It's going to give up its bond with oxygen. Um, I guess the rationale reasoning behind this is that it's going to give up the weakest bond or most unstable bond it has. And here it's bound to carbon, which is more generous than oxygen. So the bonds are tighter here and here and weaker with oxygen, that, at that oxygen which pulls electrons harder. OK, so we're almost done. Draw the next intermediate, and then we'll be at our product. All right, you guys should have gotten these two for your um, products at this point here. Um, is anything funky with uh, this molecule? Uh, it's not that I haven't drawn the hydrogens, but it's that I'm missing a negative charge right here on the oxygen because the oxygen got two electrons from uh, the bond breaking here and boron leaving. So now uh, we are so close to our final products. Um, I'm not going to draw the hydrogens in, which I'm calling borons attached to the OH. Uh, it's good to know at this point here, boron can basically go back to, go back to this step here. Another peroxide anion, peroxide ion could attack it here and carry it forth through these steps, releasing these two al, um, these two former alkenes and creating the same product as we will get here. So at this step here, here is when the water comes in, H2O. It's just to provide a proton at the very end. So H2O, the oxygen is negatively charged and attacks one of the hydrogens. And the bond breaks because hydrogen has been captured. So then the two electrons get, um, I guess, released, and the oxygen takes it. All right? And then once the oxygen takes the H, we get to our final product. Woo! All right. So uh, hopefully I didn't lose any of you guys there. I know this mechanism is kind of cray cray. Let's see. Let me see if I can give you guys a quick recap slash story for it. In the hydroboration step, all it's about is BH3 losing its three hydrogens. BH3 is like a wimp in the hydroboration step, right? It loses its hydrogens. It gets connected to three alkenes. First, this one. Second, this one. So it looks like this. And then it looks like this after it gets connected to another one. And then that's our middle product. After boron has been bullied and connected, it lost all three of its hydrogens. Now it's connected to the three um, carbon chains. Next, the peroxide and the base come into play. The peroxide anion, negatively charged oxygen, attacks the boron. And then it basically gets attached to the boron. And then one of, at this point here, one of the carbon chains has the opportunity to hop onto the peroxide instead of the boron, and it does. And once that happens, we get closer and closer to releasing the, the boron and to our product here, OK? I guess another key thing that will be useful for you to remember is that the OH that gets kicked off of your peroxide is the one that comes back and helps you release your boron, OK? Um, yeah. So that's basically it for the hydroboration oxidation. Hopefully this made it a little bit more easier. So yeah, once again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me down below or through my Orgo Made Easy Facebook page or Twitter. Uh, if you have any suggestions uh, for topics that you would like to see me covered, feel free to post it down somewhere as well. If you like this video, make sure you like it down there as well. And don't forget to subscribe in case you want to stay updated with my videos. I plan on making about one or two if I have a lot of time every week this semester, so keep an eye out, okay? Thanks for watching. Bye. Hello. Um, let's see, hold up.